Hi guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, second time recording this because uh, my darn thing just turned off. I, if my phone gets too full, it turns off. Anyway, all right, you guys, I created another Angie's Angel, but I created her be also, well, I just like to draw all the time, but I created her because um, Jane Davenport in her Facebook group is having like an Arttober. And every day she has a different prompt. And then you draw um, a girl or whatever I guess you want to draw that um, that uh, represents that prompt for the day. And then um, this goes on for 31 days. It's a big challenge. And then at the end of 31 days, if you do all 31, she has like this whole bunch of like, she says she's giving it to everybody who has the 31 drawings, giving them like this big, huge thing of art supplies. So... Um, for one, I want that big thing of art splice, but number two, how much better of an artist am I going to be painting every single day, uh, drawing and painting every single day for 31 days straight? I mean, I'm going to learn so much, so I'm super excited. Okay, so we're going to start painting this one together. Um, I do want to show you, though, in my last video, um, I finished this off. I was going to make another video to show you how I finished it off because I had to still color the, um unicorn and I had to do the background but I just didn't have time I did go ahead I went ahead and put this in the Arttober um Jane's Arttober um because this one she had a prompt that said big hair so this totally fulfills the big hair okay then another one she did another one that I put in Arttober Jane's Arttober is um this one it's a uh, kiss and makeup so if you can see on her lips See her lips? I have a little black, it's actually a little black heart in her lips. And that kind of like makes it look so that the lips look like there's like like they're like they're kissing out a little bit. It's not the best representation of kissing, but I did my best with that part. So that's the kiss. And the makeup is that I went ahead and fully made up her face with a bunch of makeup, which I do all the time anyway. But I used the Jane Davenport um the color sticks and they're made to look like lipsticks so I use these so that's the makeup okay so that's how I followed her thing for kiss and makeup so I think she turned out really pretty I did a mixed media background so the other thing is I want to show you this I just I only gotten one thing so far I'm kind of waiting for things to go on sale or to use coupons so anyway um I got this one and these are the color sticks here's the container that it comes in I'll be buying a bunch more stuff here soon. Um, and they're made to look like lipsticks. You guys look at these. Fabulous. And then they look like a, like a lipstick crayon. Isn't that cool? And they're so creamy. They're water soluble. They come in a container, which I love the container. Look at has her face, the face that's on there. That looks so cool. And then um, these are all the colors it comes in. What's cool about this color here, this is a good skin color for a uh, dark skin tone. This is good for the highlighted parts of the face that you leave like white, but put this down first as a base and then put this over it. And then I do some more shading with pencil. So anyway, I'm going to start with these two, but I wanted to show you these. These are fabulous. These have the um, skin, t skin tone colors in them. Um, she has another one that's just like this and it has more, just a lot of different colors. This one has a lot of colors too, but it has like skin tones, stuff for your cheeks, stuff for eyes. So... Um, but you can use it any way you want to use it. Um, there's a second one. I'm going to get that one. So love these. And you can work um, right off of the stick. Like I said, it's water soluble. All right. So we are going to work right off the stick with my water brush. Let me find it. Hopefully it's full of water. All right. That one's not. I have a lot of water brushes. So just a second. Maybe this other one is. And this one is awesome. And I use Jane uh, Davenport's uh, water brushes. I had Tim Holtz, and I still have his. But I do like Jane's better because the point on the end is pointier. It works out really, really nice. See the point on there? So I do like hers better. Okay. Because I do have Tim Holtz pointier because I know he has a pointer one too. Not that if you have Tim Holtz, you use it. I mean, they're great. I just happen to like this one a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to use the gel sticks. Is that what they're called? Color sticks. And I'm going to use this um, beige color. It's the darker one of the beiges. And we're going to um, 
I'm just gonna work right off the stick like this but I don't want to do it on my page because I did that and um, I did some splattering all over my page which was fine but if I don't have to splatter my page I don't want to <laughs> okay so this color is gonna go all over This could also be a pretty uh, color for um, this could also be a pretty color for a lighter skin tone. Just using this to start with. And I am using um, watercolor paper. I'm using Jane Davenport. She has a um, she has an art journal, and in the art journal, it has a, a cold press and hot press watercolor paper. And um, I took out what well, what it is is one side's uh, hot, hot, uh, hot press and one side is cold press. Hot press means that it's the smoother side. At least that's what I believe. So I'm using the smoother side, not the more rough side. so what I like to do is um, I like to do my drawing I'll show you I drew her out I like to do my drawing and then um, make a copy onto the watercolor paper so that's what I do so there it is drawn out so I always have her so if I want to color her in a different way um, or add something to her or whatever I always have it plus if I want to put her in my Etsy shop for people um, to, to download as like a coloring book page I can do that too so and all these will be downloaded eventually into my store I'll let you guys know when I do that for as a coloring book page if you want to if that is of any interest to you okay I'm having to be careful because I just printed this and the ink is really wanting to lift off um, as I wet this. Um, I have a printer that only prints out black and white and those are the type, I forgot what those printers are called, but the ink is a lot cheaper and the ink is uh, waterproof so it won't uh, react, it won't activate with um, it won't activate with um, when it gets wet um, but I it wasn't convenient for me to, to use that printer but I want to let you know that so if you ever want to make a print you ever want to if you have a uh, printer like that then you don't ever have to worry about you know anything bleeding out the ink bleeding out And I also, like I said, I like to make a copy and then copy it on a watercolor paper. I love the hot press watercolor paper to work with, the smooth stuff. And also, if I mess up or I don't like something, um, I can always, um, if I don't like something and I mess up, I can always uh, do it again. So it's not like I have one shot at it and that's it. So there's a little idea after you draw something make a copy of it before you color it also I like to have a um, a lot of time I like to make an extra copy so if I want to practice something and not put it on my main my main girl I have a little practice girl on the side of me 
So if I'm, if I'm doing a new skin tone or some hair color that I'm not sure of, whatever I'm not sure of, instead of practicing it on my girl, I can practice it on the extra girl I printed out. So, all right, next, this is that darker skin tone I was telling you about. You know what? I'm going to dry this real quick. Also, let me make sure you guys are still there. Yes, you are. All right, let me dry this. So now I'm going to go ahead and start shading. I'm going to put the skin tone color on here. And does this one have a name? This name of this one is, it's called Highbrow. But the first thing I did when I saw this darker skin, this, this darker skin color tone, I was like, Ooh, I wonder if that is going to work on my girls. For a darker skin tone and it does it works really nice Okay, I'm get, sorry guys, I'm getting a little quiet on you. I actually almost forgot I was filming. <laughs> I've been working like an insane person ever since I decided to do this challenge because I'm a little bit behind, so. I've been working like a crazy person. I'm trying to like... I guess catch up. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight there. You don't have to use a um, water brush like I'm doing, but it's really nice if you have one. All you have to do is wipe off. You don't have to keep going back to your water. I don't use it for everything, but it's nice to do what I'm doing right now with it. Okay. 
so let's go ahead and bring this highlight in here. So I'm just adding in all the color here. Okay. I'm going to go back over that and give it a second coat here in just a second. And I probably should come in a little bit closer so you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. There we go. Let's put some color on the chest here. And right in the middle there, I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter. Okay. I'm going to go back over the skin tone a little bit to make things a little smoother. Okay. I can't believe how quiet I'm being. Usually I have a whole lot to say. Well, you know what it is too. This is a new product for me to work with, so I'm focusing a little bit more because it's not what I normally use. It's like a new thing for me to use this, so. All right, let me dry this. It's looking a little swatchy. Let me dry it though. We'll see. Before I dry it, let me just see. It went a lot smoother the first time I used it, so that's why I'm kind of. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over this with just water, and no color. Okay, you know what? It's actually smoothing out. I think I might have used it too dark. And it got... Um, and that's why it went splotchy. Because now I'm just using just the water. And um, things are smoothing out. I'm just going to go ahead and do this nose area right here. And we'll put that in in a second. All right, let me use a little bit more. Well, let me go ahead and dry it. Okay, I got everything smoothed out like I like, but except for that forehead part. Okay, so I learned something when you're doing the skin tone so I've only used this this is only my second time using this I used it earlier when I did that other girl which one when I did her so and now that I, I remember when I did it um, don't go too deep if you go too if you if you put on too much it'll start getting streaky so
So if that happens to you and you, and you use this and it's, you're using that darker skin tone and it starts getting really streaky, you can just take your water brush with just um, no, no color on it and just start going over things. And that just lightens it up a little bit and wipe your brush, wipe it, light, lighten your brush. And if you get anything splotchy, just dry it and then apply more lightly after that and see how you like it. So now I like this. This looks good. So that's what, sorry about that guys, that's what my all my silence was about was is I was trying to work this, work with these sticks because it's my first time working with them. So you're experiencing it with me. All right, so let's dry. Okay, so now, let me just put this away. I have some pencils. I'm going to use my pencils here. These are, I use Prismacolors and I like to use Jane Davenport's. I also have Spectrum Noir's uh, pencil, a whole set of those, and I need to, I need to put them in, I need to get them out and put them in this set. What I do is whether it's a Jane Davenport or it's a Prismacolor, I put them all, all my browns together like this. And then that way I have them, um, that's how I have all my pencils. All the purples are together like this, all the blues. So that's a nice way to organize. Okay, I know I want that. And I think I want the sienna brown. That or the terracotta. Let me see. Just a second, I'm testing out some colors here real quick. Okay, I don't want that. I think I want the Sienna Brown. Is that Sienna Brown? Okay, this is what I want. Okay. Here we go. So I'm using a Prismacolor uh, Sienna Brown, and then I'll be using uh, Dark Umber, and to do some blending, I'll probably be using this peach and my blender pencil. So I'm going to come in here and do some shading, come here with the pencil, and try to do it lightly and do light layers, not always easy, at least it's not easy for me, I like to bear down on a pencil. I wish I didn't, but. Okay, so I put some, I shaded some brown in there. I'm going to take this, um, what is this, dark umber? Yeah, dark umber. And I'm going to put some shading in here. Right there by the, right there by the uh, hairline or by the original dark line. Okay, so I've got anything in there, I don't want to erase that. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to blend that on the forehead. I'm going to go through and just blend the lighter brown first. And then I'm going to go hit that darker brown right there by the hairline. Nice. That looks good. All right.
Let's come around here. Right here in the corner, right there, I like to get it, do a nice shaping right there. And then bring some there, and then just kind of bring the brown right on the line. But right here, I like to do a little shaping right here. And then let's go to the other side. Now, I try to stay away from the eyes right here with the pencil because I want to put eyeshadow in there. And you can get it, you can get, um, I want to be able to use whatever I want to use there. I think watercolor is what I want to use up there. And um, the watercolor, um, God, I'm trying to think too much. The watercolor tries to resist it because it's, you know, it's, um, the watercolor resists it because it's, you know, wax. Alright, and then let's take this uh, dark umber and go right on the outside, right on the line. And I'm going to add a little extra darkness right into here with this. Right into there. And then just follow the, line, the original dark line. Okay, and then let's blend out. looks good okay let me see what you guys are seeing yeah she's really coming along okay so now let's go down to the neck area And then um, right in the little crux area underneath the chin, I'm going to get it real dark in there with this and do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to put a little bit more dark on this side. Really bring that down there. One side needs to be a little more shaded than the other. Oops. Okay, so let's blend this out a little bit here. That looks really good. And I'll just take this little peach right here and kind of blend this out a little bit. There we go. All right, let me let you see what you guys are seeing. That looks good. Okay. I'm loving that. That looks really good. Okay. So now, next, we need to start putting on, let's work on the eyes next. For one, I want to, let's just reline some things really quickly. Let me see my time situation. Okay. So I'm going to go through and just, Because when you make a copy of something, or you 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 know done your painting, you start um, losing the shape and definition of everything. 
So it's good to go back here and reline things. Um, if you want to, you can also use, I'm using a uh, Sakura Pigment Sensei ink pen. If you want, you can always use a black uh, pencil too, like a Prismacolor pencil or whatever pencils you have. Um, that black Prismacolor pencil is really nice and black. And any of your colored pencils will work. You're, you know, your blacks doing this. I never really thought to use up the pencil to do this part. I've always just done it like this, but I seen a girl the other day use it and it looked really nice, so. Okay, I got it. Okay, I had, um, made it like a lot thicker over here so i'd go back over here and make it just as thick okay um okay i'm not going to do the eyelashes right now because I'll, I'll probably redefine the eyelashes a little bit more but i don't want to do that yet because or not i not i think i will but i want to first do um the eyeshadow and all that then we'll go back over with a pencil okay let's get um some color in the eyes and you guys know I love some green eyes, so we're going to do my same old green eyes that I do all the time. Actually, you know what? I'm looking at this teal color. You know what? Just a second. We may change. We may change. I want to try this teal color for the eyes. It's called, um, it's Jane Davenport's. Here it is right here. I don't know if you guys are seeing it. It's this one right here. And it's called Mermaid. Perfect. You guys know I love me some mermaids. Mermaids, unicorns, fairies. Do I want to live in a in a fairy world or what? I sure the hell do. You know what I'm thinking? If I should have two different color eyes, I love that. You know what? On this one, on this one, let's not. Let's just do the same. I think watercolor is the some of the best stuff to use for eyes because it really gives that because eyes are like you can see through them almost you feel like you can you can look it through them right 